Hi and welcome to Healthy Life Hacks. I'm Jennifer Jeffries, the present day wise woman, a realistic naturopath coming to you from the surfing beaches of Australia. This podcast is for those of you who are wanting to really rock your life and health and live from a place of prevention. Let's get into today's episode. Jen, I keep caving into my cravings. What is going on? Why do I keep doing it? Tell me what it is. I get hit up with that question so often, it's insane. And what I find is for people that they they don't just cave into their cravings, they actually then go and guilt trip themselves because they went off balance. And that just doesn't work. So this podcast, I'm diving into kind of why we crave and some simple steps that I've worked with over the years to break my cravings. I promise I have all the same ability to go off track as you do. I like to keep it practical on ways to... Well, come from a place of prevention. That's it. And no guilt. Ah, let's go. So why? Why do we cave into our cravings? And I'm not going to do the whole, because I've done podcasts on it before. I'm not doing the whole, hey, if you're low in uh, magnesium, you'll crave salt. Hey, if you're low in sugar, you crave chromium. I want to go into more the mindset-y kind of things that are playing a part when we get to this point. So what I know is in life that we all have triggers of some description. We have ways of being from the past that we keep living into our future from our past and repeating these patterns. And then when we're off track, the normal response is the humanness in us is to give ourselves a hard time. And that does not help anything, anything. So I want to talk about ways that I move forward, catch myself sooner and, uh, and set myself up for more success. So am I a hundred percent perfect? Nope. Am I way different to where I was in the past? So let's talk about it. Okay, so first is, what are your triggers? There's triggers of some description. What I know is that as soon as we restrict, as soon as we say we can't have that, there's something that happens in us psychologically that puts, that takes us that deprivation, that feeling of scarcity to moving it to a feeling of urge. So it's like we're here with it. It's just like you can't have that. It's like the old don't walk on the grass it's in you that you want to walk on the grass. And part of it is that you have an inner rebel or many of us have an inner rebel. I have got such an active inner rebel. It takes me a lot to reel her in some days. Um, that's it. But it's like the reality is it just attracts us. So as soon as we say we can't have it, as soon as we're going to restrict it, we want it. And we want it with a bigger urge than we should sensibly want it. And we find that our mind starts going down a rabbit hole and it's all you can think about. So we've got to find ways to break that pattern and get out of the rabbit hole sooner. So um, if it's my inner rebel I'm working with, uh, I know that, you know, one of my mentors, David Wood, talks about what we what we think about, we bring about. So as soon as I notice that I'm on that kind of bent and it's like, and it's not even like something to eat, it's like, I have to do my gardening. I have to, I have to, I have to plant the, you know, the certain plants for this season today. And if I don't do it today, the world will end. It's so easy to get on that. It's like, no, Jen, you actually don't have to. And it's like, I'm craving to do my gardening. I want the end result. I know why I want to do it and all those things, but it's still at times it can grab me. So I know, and I've built a default in my brain over time that, um, yeah, my mentor, David Wood, he says, what we think about, we bring about. And, And I, it, when I get on that path now, sooner than later, it used to be later than sooner, I can go, oh, okay, what I think about, I bring about. So I will do something to change my thinking. Now, for me, changing my thinking is doing things like reading uh, or reading personal development books, personal growth books. Um, even at the moment, I've, I've gone back to some John Maxwell stuff. I mean, John Maxwell is an amazing uh, leader and author. And he breaks things down into layman's terms, which is my thing. I, you know, even with my podcast, I'm big on breaking things down into layman's terms. And he does it really well. Check out any of John Maxwell's books. Um, I think you'll enjoy them. If you enjoy listening kind of the style to what I work, you'll enjoy John Maxwell. Um, so I'll, I'll get onto a podcast or I'll get into a book and I will put a different message in my head so I can start thinking about different, thinking about what I want to do and I can prioritize things. What I found that uh, even I can do is I will put a heightened sense of pleasure that's going to be attached to achieving whatever that thing is that I'm craving. I know, and that's a pretty crazy one, that 
you know, if it is an eating kind of thing, your brain goes, I have to have those halloumi, you know, chips, halloumi bites uh, now. And so my brain starts thinking about what they'll taste like and all those kind of things. And I go down that track. I can, I promise, go down that track. Um, and the thing is, it's it's a it's a false heightened sense of what the outcome is going to be if I eat those bloody halloumi chips. Um, it just is. And then you eat the halloumi chips and don't get the amount of pleasure or reward that you thought you were going to get, or even with me and my gardening, I don't get the instant, maybe I don't get the instant gratification that I thought I was going to get with, you know, planting out something ready for winter. Uh, this goes across anything and everything, whatever the cravings are. And yeah, like things like gardening to me, I crave to do my gardening. I crave to go surfing uh, because I, I love it so much. But they begin, you can get this heightened false sense of what the pleasure is going to be. And it's because we've told ourselves a story, how good it's going to be if we have it, how good that piece of chocolate is, or how good that end thing is that you're craving is going to be. We tell ourselves so much. It just, it gets falsely heightened. And when you do eat that bit of chocolate or the, the halloumi fries or, you know, do something in the gardening or whatever it is, and it's not to the extent that you had dreamed about because it's falsely heightened, then uh, there's that letdown and the letdown is where we go and then do the guilt. And I'm all about just not guilt tripping. Guilt, negative emotions like guilt change our body chemistry faster than eating the shit in the first place, faster than just smashing out the work in the garden. It's crazy how quick it changes your body chemistry. Not in a good way. It makes us more acidic and inflamed. So I want people to, if, first thing is to notice, if you are off track, just go, okay, going down the rabbit hole, bring in a different thought, and I'm going to talk about some solutions. Um, put something else in there. And the first thing to not do is to, or the thing to, to do is just go, okay, at least I caught myself. Instead of where, and I, I changed the way I was going to say those words because it's important. So I was going to say, um, I'll just to explain why I caught myself then. I was going to say, um, you know, it's the whole uh, not guilt tripping yourself, but that doesn't help. It's about feeding in because it's a double negative. We're doing that guilt thing. And it's just reinforcing the negative. We want to change that behavior. So if my brain goes to default to think about, guilt tripping myself like off track with something doesn't matter what it is given in given into a craving i don't go oh don't guilt trip yourself jen i'll go hey how cool i noticed and i'm going to do this thing to come back on track it's a totally different energy versus oh shit off track yep i was guilt tripping myself that's not going to help jen said don't do that because that's all negative reinforcement i want to positively just catch it and put it in the right direction. So that's how I choose to deal with it. So what are some of the other solutions? That's it. So breaking the habit, the cravings. So breaking the cravings. So breaking the cravings can take a bit of time sometimes. So I've been with you maybe, you know, I'm bloody 63 or 63 in a couple of weeks' time. So I've got a lifetime of habits. Some work for me, some don't. And so breaking those cravings, um, some of them are ingrained. Some of them are ingrained, and that's okay. So the first one is to identify the triggers so you can come from a place of prevention. That's the ideal one. And even practical stuff like we don't have chocolate and shit in the house. We just don't. It's simple. Don't buy that stuff. We don't have packets of, um, you know, chippies in the house. We just don't. Then if so, preventing that um, potential to crave is huge. And it's not a... It's not coming from a deprivation thing. It's coming from a self-care point that we choose not to have them in the house. Then we can't be tempted. That's it. Yeah, you know, the effort it takes to drive out and buy something at the shops uh, is going to be overridden the majority of the time. So the first one is know if your triggers are that if there's food there and you're triggered, you'll go to it easy. The first step is to actually just don't put the shit in your house in the first place. That's it, if it's that kind of thing, Okay. If you know that there's different situations you can get uh, fed into, whether it's family stuff is big for a lot of people. I know in the past, family's been a huge trigger for me um, where I've gone and emotionally eaten when I was younger, without a doubt. that's That was a, a real thing for me uh, to work with and to overcome. 
uh, we want to be able to anticipate that if we know we're going into those situations, if I know I'm going into a situation where I can be triggered or in the past I've been triggered is a better way to put that. Um, you know, eating something healthy before I go. And so that, you know, I'm grounded, I'm fed, I'm grounded, I'm not going to be as flighty. All those things can be a, a great place to start. That's it. Uh, where If something comes up, you know, if I'm visiting someone, for instance, in a situation where I could be triggered or I have been triggered in the past, um, distracting ourselves. So even, you know, if uh, I, know, I know I've done it uh, as a way to deal with things, if I've been, you know, around my dad, uh, or my mum when she was alive and and I was triggered instead of, because mum has always had, you know, like a big jar of lollies at the house. That's been their comfort food. Uh, and we were raised that if, you know, dad was in a good mood, he bought lollies home, Alan's lollies. And so that's that default. And so imagine if I, I went and visited parents and something happened and triggered, you know, it'd be so easy and socially acceptable in our family to just go and grab a handful of lollies. But if I want to break that pattern, instead of doing that, you know, I can get up and I can walk outside and sit at the outside table and say, hey, let's come outside or do something physical, go for a walk, do something you can do to physically change your state. That's a big one. It creates a distraction. And nine times out of 10, when you do that, you, you're back into that, when you're back in that same situation again, you're not in the same brain space and you're not going to um, hold or, you know, be triggered the same way. So that's a big one. And then as you do that, just thinking about that, as you do that, celebrate the win, go, yeah, I didn't do it. You know, I, vis I visited my folks' place and, and didn't eat lollies today. That's huge. Celebrate those wins, get the dopamine hit, because that's that's the, the thing that will reinforce positively a new behavior, a new habit, so that you don't go and cave into your cravings again. Mindfulness is a big one. So, uh, you know, Alice, my wife, is she does clinical tapping. So she teaches people how to do um, clinical tapping to help break, you know, those old habits and part and um, that are not working for us. She works a lot with clients all around the world. So whether with, it's with food cravings or things like cigarette smoking or just their thought processes around sleep, whatever it is, she does that kind of work. So I'll actually put a link below in the comments here. Uh, to Alice's website, Dr. Alice McKinnon. She does really cool work. You might want to check out some of her YouTubes and things. She does a lot of work in this department with helping people to break cravings. So mindfulness is big. So even just the art of stopping and breathing is huge. Stop and breathe. That's the first step of mindfulness. When we breathe, we can we can ground ourselves again and we're not in that reactive mode. That's a big difference, reacting versus responding positively. So mindfulness, um, I've worked with people and I've done it in myself in the past that I've kind of made a trade-off. I've done that if I, all right, so if I do eat this whatever, it's going to cost me a walk around the block um, in the next half an hour, subject closed, not negotiable. And then I've got a choice. If I choose to have this, I'm going to do something to help balance it out. So if I, then I will is a, a useful statement for some people as you're in the process of breaking um, a habit that's not working for you. So uh, some people find that doesn't work for them because they're still maybe eating it or doing whatever. But the the power you're getting yourself for keeping the commitment being your word that if I eat this, I will then do this straight away, go for a walk or you know do 10 push-ups or whatever it is. Um, that's a really good way to start positively reinforcing um, that you kept your word with yourself. That's huge because our word is law. That's it. At the end of the day, all we've got is our word. That's the biggest, most important thing. So stop selling yourself out. We want to establish routines. So um, the most place, most common place that people go off track with cravings and things is uh, around food cravings, obviously. Um, and there's there's lots of other cravings. But if we're just talking about that one, uh, establish routines. So eat consistently. Eat a good balance of good proteins, good fats, and good carbs so that your body is in a state that is less likely go craving crap. And then you've got more chance of you know, working on the mindset stuff and that. So a routine of some description is important. Um, and then, of course, you know, get the buy-in of friends. Uh, I remember when I got sober, you know, I was an alcoholic in my 20s when I burned out. And when I got sober, I 
I got friends to help keep me on track that if I was craving a drink, they, I knew that I had a support crew there that I could ring up and say, hey, you know, help me work through this. Uh, and that worked really, really, really well. So part of that is actually also in self-care. So I want to touch on self-care to close this piece out is um, be gentle with yourself and be patient with yourself. <laughs> be gentle with yourself and be patient with yourself. Pretty simple. So any change can take time. It doesn't have to, but we let it take time. That is one thing. It doesn't have to take a big amount of time. It will take as long as you choose to make it. If the world was, I'd say all the time, if the world was going to end for you tomorrow, you would lose your life if you did not eat no sugar for the rest of the day oh, and only eat healthy, you would do it. You would do it. You would have the motivation. You'd have the why to stay on track. You might struggle, but you would do it. If you And so, you know, it's that compelling why that really ultimately makes us stay on track. But be gentle with yourself in that process. I When I work with people and, and do coaching with them, my number one priority is to have them just sit out of that guilt zone, that they just don't go there. They build a new default where they're always working, working towards what's working for them instead of defaulting back and giving themselves a hard time because that's just negatively reinforcing things. And it goes nowhere. It really doesn't. So... Practicing self-care, being gentle with yourself is a really important priority. Um, it, if you know that if you're tired because you have a late night, you tend to crave more crap foods and things like that, well, bloody get to bed earlier properly. Take some herbs, take some adaptogens or something and help make sure that you you sleep better so that you're going to be less susceptible to doing to caving into cravings and that during the day. Um Treat yourself holistically, mind, you know, body, mind, spirit, everything. It, it's all part of it. It's not just a, hey, I'm craving sugar, so I'll take chromium so I don't crave sugar. No, we want to break those habits, that the mindset and everything that's led us to that. We want to break those triggers that keep putting us back in, into those situations. It's not just take the supplement. So that's why I wanted to talk about this. Be patient with yourselves, um, be gentle with yourselves, and hold hope, hold hope. Because I promise we can create new habits around anything if we choose. We can stop caving into cravings if we choose. The first step is just to go, okay, cool. In the past, this has happened this way. Oh, look, there it is again. Okay, cool. I am now replacing it with this behavior. That's it. It can be that simple, but we have to start. I hope that's a help. Uh, like I say, I'm not the queen of... Uh, I'm not poly purity. I don't do everything perfect, but I've definitely made ways in my life, found ways in my life to be in balance more than I'm out of balance. That's it. I'm out of here. See ya. I want to thank you for being here today. If you enjoyed my podcast, please let me know by leaving a review on Apple Podcast. Every month, I draw one lucky person who leaves a review, have a free one hour consultation with me. Be sure to subscribe to the show wherever you're tuning in from so that you always catch the next episode. I welcome your emails and you can write to me at podcast at healthylifehacks.com.au. Until next time, remember, when it comes to life, live it, love it, and get on with it.